how to make sense of all that's happening around us, our emotions, and our natural inclination to progress. This time, I spoke with Steve Aish, a performance coach, mentor, and champion athlete focused on helping others find inner peace. I am Jose Antonio Morales, and this is the Constructing Fear Interviews. So who am I without fear? I think there's a necessary precursor to that question, and that's really to clarify what fear is. Now, I'm very pleased that we're almost on the same page with our definitions of fear, and I think it's helpful that you mentioned that instinctual, almost visceral, nervous system reactive fear when your life is under threat. You're in a very serious situation that requires 100% effort to, you know, that, that, that survival, that there is a blip on the radar, you've got to do something big and time's running out, to that more kind of reactive, overthinking, runaway train mind, shall we say, that could lead to more of a psychological fear. So who would I be without fear? I don't know, because I don't think it's possible. That would be my initial, that would be the the heading above the door that we then walk through for the next adventure. Now, if we look at two versions of fear, the real, you know, I'm face to face with a pack of wolves that are hungry and all I've got is a stick. You know, this is going to be, abs- I, I think a great way of seeing fear as an extreme is terror that could end your life. And this is why for me, Medusa was a fantastic archetype of that to petrify, to terrify, to turn to stone, you freeze. You, you don't have options. You, in that moment, this is it. It's do or die. Now, here's the thing. If I say I have a fear of public speaking, the very utterance of that means it's the great terror that I can never overcome. Therefore, I give every opportunity to come up with an objection or an excuse or put it off or, or disappear or you know pull a sickie that day. It's all about the label for me. It's about the consequences and, shall we say, the weight, the gravity of the label. If we look back at the world of hi-fi years ago, you had a graphic equalizer and you had your your volume dial. You've got your bass and your treble. Fear for me is volume on 10, meaning there's a situation that is immense and requires my immediate attention, you know, just about to be hit head on because there's a 20 ton truck flashing the lights. I'm in the wrong, (gasps) that incredible rush of adrenaline, cortisol, that the twitches come in, you are literally plugged in and you have seconds to react. You know, not not going to talk to a teacher or (laughs) ask a person at the bar if they want a drink. Yes, you feel nervous, but here's the thing. It's the misidentification. And what I say to many clients is that instead of having a fear of public speaking, what if you were very nervous? Now, if, if we look at that volume dial, fear on 10 is a no-go. Can't do it, won't do it, you couldn't pay me enough. You know, you feel like you're going to have a heart attack, you're going to throw up on the people in the front row, they're going to ask you a question, you don't know the answer, you get your words wrong, you feel embarrassed, you want the floor to open up and swallow you. Why would you put yourself, now here's the wonderful thing with that prefrontal cortex and that, that almost biological memory, If I know how bad I feel thinking about it, how bad is it going to be doing it? Why on earth would I put myself in that situation and risk that level of threat? So if we wind 10 down to 7, you're very nervous. The sweats are coming on thinking about it, and you'd rather not do it. But guess what? You could. And for me, that is the toe in the door where this is still an option, but there's a lot of work to be done before it's a reality. Because for me to say that there is a fear of a thing means that that's a closed door, not just now, but through time. It's a no-go zone. Who am I with a better awareness of the consequences of my emotions and labels? 
someone that has the ability to objectively analyze a situation and its consequences. But more importantly, as an observer, look at where I have maybe created a hideous monster that instead of being this gargoyle or titan is maybe just the cat with a little bit of a hiss <laughs> that's a deterrent and is putting me off. And I'm not realizing that, well, you know, I always look for proof. How many people have gone from being very worried about speaking to doing it successfully? Absolutely millions. You know, nobody flies out and stands on a stage and speaks to a thousand people without any kind of worry or physiological. Even great speakers say, I still get nervous. The heart, if you've got, you've got your Fitbit, you've got your Apple Watch, I can guarantee you. And, and the reason I use this example is because I would have had a classic fear of public speaking in the terms of using that label i'd be at a conference at a table and i'd be in you know there's john from sheffield and he does x and here's sam from wherever and as it got to the person next to me i can feel my pulse in my neck like i'm doing cardio and i'm thinking what's this all about i'm in a safe place now that's that's a key factor <laughs> i'm in a safe place okay i don't know most of the people but then you worry about judgment and showing up and everything else I'm telling people my name, where I'm from and what I do. I'm not about to be eaten by sharks. Why the hell am I in this 120 pulse, literally shaking? You can feel, you, you know, the, the, there's a breath happening. There's a tightness in the chest. It's almost like, a, you know, a bit of anxiety has kicked in. <clears throat> and what I realized there is this is a very natural state for most people that have then never gone on to overcome it. So what I did, I didn't walk on stage and do a TED talk. I decided to wander up and down my front room giving ghost lectures. No one's present that I knew of. And I'd perfect my material for repetition. And I went on to speak to hundreds of people several times at conferences, at universities. I spoke for Porsche as their guest speaker at their annual conference for a three day event. You know, we're talking 100 plus people several times from the guy that at school would actually not attend when you had to give a presentation. I would do anything to worm out of it. The sheer act of standing there with eyeballs on you would be too much. And if we can slightly digress, I learn why. Because most of us at some point in our history have been embarrassed in public and now we hide away from it. <laughs>